the capacity for those four panels was 10 students at a time, 10 children. And then the space required for the um, safety mats to go around, they need to be 15 feet by 27 feet so that you're making it safe enough for the kids to climb on. Any questions so far? I'm guessing it's front and back. It is, yes, yeah, they can climb on either side. Either see how tip kids can fit on that. So right, yes, yeah, yeah, it is, it's front and back. Um, then here's the safety tile. So we need it at least 405 square feet um, for the safety tiles to go under and around the climbing structure since that's where the kids are going to be. Um, I've contacted AAA State of Play out of Indianapolis, Indiana. Um, for the eight inch, or not the eight inch, for the eight foot max fall height, we need the three inch thick tiles enough to cover that required space. That price quote is $7,913.66. And that does include um, the glue adhesive that would come with them, as well as the edge pieces, which are in the next. Slide. This is just a really rough diagram of what those edge pieces are going to look like. So um, where we're thinking of putting it is on the concrete, so we'll get to that in just a second. But instead of, you know, there being a pretty big lip up from the concrete up to the three inch tile, um, you know, that's just a big tripping hazard. So we do need the edge pieces to go along that to, to make it a much smoother transition. Okay, so here's our current playground, what the kids see and play on every day. And the first step would be to move the current shelter that is there. So I kind of did some rough Photoshop and showed you a couple options of where the structure could be moved to that um, we kind of decided on whenever I talked with Dr. Rob last week and Mr. Kohler as well. So option one is to put it on the kind of entrance going from the parking lot up to that uh, basketball kind of court area. There is, <coughs> Mr. Kohler thought, about 1% grade there. Probably still a viable option to put it there. That keeps it inside the playground and inside the fence and everything. Um, the other option that we kind of talked about and threw around was to put it just on the um, parking lot, just right there um, at the gate. A third option that I thought of kind of late in the game was to put it here in this area. We'd have to repaint the hopscotch, but this basketball goal is movable and You'll see in the next picture that if we just slid it over, it would stay, you know, inside the fencing, still be a really good option for the kids to use um, whenever they're out at recess. But that's kind of the main thing to decide before we order is where are we going to put the shelter um, that's <coughs> Here is where we are wanting to place the new structure. Um, this is the diagram that, <coughs> that Bill had sent covering the area of um, 15 feet by 27 feet. And so that would set there. And like I said, the other option would be if we just moved the shelter over, it would set right here in the same orientation that it's in right now. Um, it wouldn't have to be turned to 90 degrees, um, but it could set and just be slid over a little bit and still, I think, be enough out of the way of the basketball goal that it shouldn't affect anything that's already there. And the hopscotch could be painted and go in line with the um, four square if we wanted to put the structure where the hopscotch is now. Um, installation, we're looking at fall of 2022. If we go ahead and order soon, um, the mats have like a five, three to five week time of whenever they would be here. I just don't want to get in the obstacle of us ordering it a little bit later and then 
then come back and say, oh, well now we're actually three to five months out. So I would probably go ahead and get those ordered. We would have to store those until we were ready to install them, but that way they were for sure here whenever the um, structure became available. And we're looking at a fall delivery at this point for the climbing structure. Um, they could deliver it. Since they are in Missouri, we could also drive down and pick it up and save a little bit in cost of, of shipping and everything. Um, whenever we get ready to install that, if we get to that point, <coughs> um, we would have to drill some holes into the concrete to be able to anchor the structure down. Um, whenever Bill and I have talked, you know, he went and asked all the questions of, is this a new build? Is this going on fresh ground? Is this going on concrete? So he knows that it would probably be going on concrete and it would be ordered and come with all of the correct anchors so that it would be firmly planted there where it would go. And then we'd also, or of course, have to glue down all the mats and the edge pieces. Um, the total cost for the project would be $13,711.66 with the quotes that I have right now. Um, and PTO's balance is, I did not get a final number, but I know that we're in about the $20,000 range. So that still leaves us with plenty of money to be able to start the next school year with enough money to order shirts and be ready for spirit wear in the fall. So, any other questions? Comments? What was the height of the structure? Um, it has an eight foot fall height. Okay. Or possible fall height to it. So. Amanda, if you go back to the option one photo. Uh huh. Does, any, does anybody by chance know that square footage there underneath option one? That's she just imposed the picture there, so that's probably how it would be about the same size. The canopy I think is eighteen by twenty one. Yeah, I the just, carport canopy. I just picked it up from this picture and just moved it over. So, so that's the size, that's scale. the to size and to scale that it that it is. Yeah. But that's open. Yeah, so anybody can get in and out easy. Yeah, and either one of those options. I believe <coughs> if you can still get the tractor on the playground, they can drive right underneath the canopy because we have a double gate. Yeah. And so I think it's like a 1%. Isn't that right for handicap? One, one he percent. Saved, yeah, one percent. So I think it's pretty close to that when they put it in. I think when you all had that done the first mm -hmm. time, I think they paid pretty close attention to it. So either place is great. Um, you know, if, if you wanted option two, we could do it. We may have to buy a little bit of chain link and put around the outside of it. We already have the rigging on the structure, the railing on the structure. If they wanted to put chain link just to add a little more place space on the actual concrete. But <clears throat> either one of those options, and even like Lamanda said, if you slide it down there over the hopscotch, I think there's still be plenty of room. It's beneficial. The kids, some kids get shade, teachers get shade. Um, Kids up here on the weekend, they hang out on any of their picnic tables. So, definitely, your camp is a good thing to have. How about how it long do those pads last? Did they say? They did not say how long the pads last. I assume that they will last as long as the <coughs> existing ones are there as well. And they seem to seem to be holding up really well any time that I'm over there on the playground. Is everything holding up on the playground? Yep. Uh, might want to have the turf people come in sometime and just kind of go around the edges and check nailings and just make sure things are staying in place. But yeah, I think the, the wear, I mean, it's, you go out there and look at the cardinal, it still looks like the day they put it down. So mm -hmm. it looks like it's in pretty good shape, especially along the edge of the concrete. That was our biggest concern. Mm -hmm. Water still flows off of it. It can rain and we can be on it in five minutes. So. That's awesome. Yeah, it is. We have, uh, is it a swing set that's on the end? Um, so on that picture, the north side of the picture where the yellow is are the swings. And then down to the far left, we have a set of two swings there by that looks like a cooler, the mm -hmm. outdoor freezer. So we have two, I think we have eight swings total. And this, this, this wall looks a lot longer in the, when you see it from a different view. I mean, it's probably 19, 18 feet long, so it is a pretty good size structure. How many students can climb on it? Yeah. Yeah. Recommended yeah. 10. Mm -hmm. 
Because they can climb on both sides of the... If, have you ever been down to Memorial Park at Jeff? They they put in a new playground there, and that's kind of where we got the idea. It looks like railroad ties, but it's that real heavy duty plastic fiberglass. It's the same thing this wall's made out of. And I say the height is probably six foot, probably. Probably. And so yeah, they it's a good structure. I think that, that park gets worked over pretty good too. So yeah. Yeah. Does that, do a lot of kids use that swing down there by the, the freezer? Yep. Do you think the te uh, since teachers may use that um, as shade, it'd be better to keep that more central, so moving it over to the left rather than over to the right? I don't think it makes really much difference. They may be able to see things better from up there on the option D or option A or one. Mm -hmm. They might be able to see the playground better view of it anyway versus head on a swivel. Yeah. They really don't set in it a whole lot. If you see to the right side of the picture there we've got two benches that we got through the grant the recycling grant and those teachers really like those two benches and so oh yeah we'll have to slide the, the benches yeah the corner, those are pretty easy to, to move i don't think anything stops you if you set it up on the spot see how that <coughs> oh right yeah you know, the yeah, that canopy that can be good it's yeah. not heavy yeah. 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 So we can try it out and see what we like. Because you're not, are you concrete anchoring it in? Um, on that canopy, they just dr drilled holes and they drilled probably a two foot bolt through the concrete into the ground. So there's nothing, there's no anchor. Fill it right back up. Yeah, you just fill those, fill those up with mm -hmm. concrete and oh, move on. And take your best shot. I was surprised when he put it. I said, this thing's not going to fly off. And he said, no, it won't. And it has, but it stayed right there. Actually, when they put it in, we moved it three or four times before we picked that spot after they put it together, so. Okay. Does anybody got any more questions for Lamaine? Anything else? Okay. Jeff, Thanks, Lamaine. Okay, moving forward. I only appreciate this project. You, you guys all in favor of moving that project forward? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Right. Yeah, aye, yeah. Yeah, because yeah. yeah, I think she'll have some savings. If she does it now, and yeah, the way sure. with the increase of stuff going up, it's just going to cost more. <coughs> yeah, There's no that's cost that's to the great. district for them, yeah. but maybe some manpower. Well, thank you guys. Thank you. Yeah, for sure. We call that a dad project. <laughs> I was going to ask. PTO dads come up. It's a cool little project. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you guys. That's, that's great. Um, so I didn't put a lot of details. 
it's roughly about 40% of our elementary schoolers. So um, I could get that information or data if that's needed or wanted at the end of the school year. I think it's important to look at it as we close out a school year for planning for the next year to see what types of referrals we're getting and where the high numbers are. Um, curriculum, I teach 13 classes each week, so all 238 students receive those lessons. Um, kind of just explain that they're really sad about uh, the GLEs, you know, that can all be found on the Desi website and in the PowerPoint as well. So that's just the curriculum, the lessons, the lessons that I teach in the class. <coughs> Um, under individual planning and system support, the school counselor, I'm sure you remember from Carla coming, um, you know, is on the PBS leadership team, the principal advisory committee. Uh, we're also the building test coordinator, the early childhood advisory team, teacher and staff consultation and collaboration. We have rural school-based um, mental health services in our school, so that requires a lot of referral and communication and coordination. I don't know how to make this go down that well. Okay, sorry. Um, the WINGS program is our gifted program. The counselor is in charge of that. And then our buddy pack program, I pretty well, you know, coordinate that, so those services each week for the buddy packs for the students to get to. Yeah, they both come from school. Um, so that's kind of just a snapshot of just elementary. <coughs> Um, I'm not really sure what kinds of questions you would have as far as the program as a whole or at the elementary level. Like I said, that's just such a tiny little snapshot of everything. Um, it'd be impossible to, to tell you about everything probably. Uh, but if there are any questions, you can email me or ask. Well, this is awesome. Okay. It's just easy to... Yeah, yeah I always appreciate yeah. that when somebody's trying to explain their, their big picture for yeah. <laughs> That's it in a nutshell. Like I said, it can't quite encapsulate everything, but that's kind of the gist of it. Um, so, yeah. More any questions? No, thank, you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. You're welcome. All right. Appreciate it. Um, all right. So, oh, I just this team's included their report there. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> I'm going to point out one piece on those. Um, okay. And I thought you guys might want to see. And I asked you to correct that part, but that's there for you to take a look at. Um, I think it's always important when you say we build the future, what kind of future are they headed to? Um, it's also on your screen there. But if you look at that's not just 2021 graduates, graduates. I sort of go back three years. And we look at our end results. Where are our students going? Because if we're preparing them for some kind of a future, if we're looking at it, you know, just take a look at those percentages from those class years. They all differ just a little bit. Um, 2021, we saw a lot more kids entering the military. That's kind of a characteristic of a class sometimes. You get some kids that have uh, more parents or close affiliations with the military in some way or, or get drawn by that. Or maybe you just have a better recruiter that's coming in and talking to kids better and pushing them their life. Um, we're seeing more kids that are in employment, especially back in 2019. They're, so, you know, what, what future are we preparing them for? We're, we're preparing them to enter the workforce. So I think more and more with our economy, and you see some, I just saw a commercial this morning, it was, I, I can't remember the name of the company, but the, hey, come to our company, we'll teach you how to weld, we'll teach you how to, how to do all these skills and work in the paint shop and we'll train you, we'll train you, going to start $15 an hour. Well, that's not something we've seen for a long time, the shortage of workers. So you're seeing more and more companies that are grabbing kids out of high school. We've got a few of our graduates that are already working jobs, and they're in college too. They're already working jobs almost full time. Um, sometimes Ms. Metter's trying to snag them into the building um, because the opportunities are there. This goes kind of goes back to when, you know, a lot of kids back in the you know, 40s, 50s, and 60s had factory jobs, had other jobs they could go right into out of high school, or maybe they didn't even go to high school. You know, they just went into the workforce. So it's kind of an odd thing because what's been the message for many, many decades now, it's all about, you know, when you leave high school, are you going to college? college there you go. So 
now it's becoming more of what are you going to go train to do vocationally? We've got a lot of kids involved in our vocational programs. You can kind of see that. They're going to go into that two-year college or two-year program, or they're going into employment. And I always used to tell the kids this. I said, it doesn't matter if you go to college or don't go to vocational program. If you go to Mickey D's, you're going to go to the school of Mickey D's. You're going to learn how to make shakes, fries up, fries down. You're going to learn how to make a burger, how to keep, how to keep food from spoiling. You're going to learn stuff no matter what. So um, I think it, it's just good to kind of know the character of what we have. We have a pretty good split, especially in those top three. And the characteristic of every class is a little different. What's important to me is that we have built something at the high school and the elementary, prepping for the middle school and high school, that no matter what they want to do, if it's the future they're pursuing, if they're going to go be a builder, if they're going to go be a an electrician, whatever it is, they're a learner when they walk out. So we don't want, Ms. Metter and I, we don't like kids to say, I just barely graduated. No, 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 no. We want to prepare you in some way because you are going to do something. Sitting on mom and dad's couch is not the option. It's not. I talked to a parent the other day, so I still got one at home that's 22 years old. They didn't come through this school, but man, I need to get them out of the house. So I think that's the collaboration we have with parents. And that guidance and counseling piece is so important that we open up these opportunities to kids so they're aware. And I also used to tell kids when I was a principal all the time that high school is like a, like a food bar. You're trying a little bit of everything to see where is your disposition, what do you want to go do. And I think we do a really good job. You can say we're a small school all day, but there are all kinds of contests and opportunities for kids in this small school. A lot more than a lot of other small schools. So that's a really good thing that we keep those opportunities up for kids. So that's all I got to say about that. And then there's the A-plus program. You guys are kind of aware of that. That's been around for a little while. Ms. Wilson works that. Um, she gave you a report there that <coughs> kind of gave you an idea. Of those kids that are accessing um, the state paid tuition. And um, we've done some good things um, along those lines as well as making opportunities for kids to meet. Probably the hardest piece of that is, is that 50 hours of tutoring that they have to get. Ms. Mender's done a great job kind of encouraging kids to get into kids that teaching for credit. Mr. Cole has done a great job making opportunities with the elementary teachers so that our kids can be able to access that. 100% of college-bound uh, seniors are A-plus eligible. Um, they can get into uh, we have 29 for A plus scholarships. Uh, looks like this last year, based on her report. So a little bit of a fun way of getting them guided that way. We don't like we don't like seniors in their last semester saying, "Hey, I don't have my 50 hours." <laughs> it's like that's not a good sign. So. We've only had a few that that have come to us in January, January, and said, "Hey, I think I need my A plus," and we figured out how to get it accomplished. So even those that have come to us late, we're making it happen for them still. So they kind of came late to the ball game. <laughs> Are they still able to um, help with summer school and get their A-plus hours? Yes. They were, yes ma'am. And then what we are doing now through that cadet teaching, we have that going on, but then also the academic intervention that we've been having all year long after school, they've been coming into that. So if they're not able to do cadet teaching, Say they go to VOTEC, they can't do the cadet teaching. They come in after school to the academic intervention programs and help tutor during that time of helping those kids at that same time in Jan term and fifth quarter. And I'd also expect guys <coughs> entering the employment piece. You may think, well, that's all you're going to do is graduate and enter employment. Think about all the skills you learned from your first job. You learn how to show up to a job, you learn how to be on time, you learn how to meet demands. It's a good thing, and sometimes it will focus you and say, you know, I don't want to do this particular job my whole life. I am going on to school. So you get that 22, 24-year-old that goes, I need to earn a certification or something, or a license, or maybe I need a two-year degree. I, I, I don't want to do this entry-level job my whole life. So sometimes kids get a little more mature. Yeah, did you have a question? Yeah, question. I just saw something here with summer school. Do we have an alternative plan for those kids? I have. Go over that with you in my report. Yeah. Any other questions? Well, I, I'm talking specifically about A plus, though. Oh, with A plus. Now, we if, still, if students were planning on getting their A plus on to their hours yeah. through summer school, they'll be able to get some hours. Yeah. And that. 
It won't be a full-fledged summer school, but there's still some opportunities. And with cadet teaching for credit, they can be assigned actually one of our elementary teachers for a whole school year if they need to. So they can get into that program as well. And we have after-school tutor. They can do that as well. So we have a lot of spots to pick up those hours. But specifically this summer, what can they do? We will have, you guys want to talk about that now, let's jump right to my report. Yeah, it's um, that time. I can do it out of, out of order. Um, summer school and talking with, and they're going to come on site again on Thursday. Um, our project manager, I mean, I think he's committed to do what we want to do. However, we're looking at all the, all the graphics and the places that are shut down in the building. Um, and the fact that it will impede them somewhat, he said we will have a, a much better chance of starting school on time if we're out of their way. However, they'll still try to open us on time. Having been, I know California had a project, we started school, I don't know, was it a couple of weeks late? And then I was actually involved in one of these in Mexico. We started four or five days late. Um, that was a major overhaul. We're having a major project. This is GRP's largest project right now. Major. We're, we're talking ductwork all out of the elementary. We're talking about 30 <coughs> workers or more on site daily. Um, we're talking about possible electrical shutdowns, dust, noise, trucks, almost every parking lot taken up other than the one over there by the football field. Um, a lot of disruption for the entire building and the admin team and I have looked over all that and also if we were trying to play musical classroom to make this happen Mr. Kohler's people who would work summer school would be picking up all that they can carry and moving it physically to a high school classroom which has to move all their stuff out of the way not to mention seating or whatever else they want <coughs> and then getting out of the way of those workers and then Moving it all back, trying to get the school year started. There, there's a lot to consider there that I just don't think we can run a full-fledged summer school like we've done before. So, what should we run? We will have the Ag Center that will be untouched. So we have um, fifth quarter, which is kids completing their, their courses. We also have um, some students with special needs that have an extended school year that will have to have, have some classroom space. We also have Bigger, Faster, Stronger, which has been a good program for our kids and keeping them involved. And Ms. Matter has been in talks with four. There's four different teachers. There's four different teachers looking at field trip opportunities, off-site opportunities, and um, if we would have to have maybe one room, possibly we'd be one room at the high school that stay off to the <coughs> in the way from everybody. That could be a back room or some other room that we, we pick that say this one's most out of the way. So we'll still have some summer school. It will just be reduced from what we normally have, if that makes sense. I think there's an opportunity too. Our teachers really are good at the high school at thinking out of the box and kind of looking at where some education. I think Ms. Wellman was telling me she had four different things that did all four cores. Of, of subject matter. All four, there's four core teachers that have been working together and then one. So I guess five total of four, but four core teachers and one fine arts teacher that are working together of what they could offer in conjunction with each other that provides some enrichment for our children. So there'll still be some level of service there. That makes sense. High school only, though. No elementary. That'd be, other than that'd be middle school and high school, high school and that. The special <coughs> needs would include some elementary kids. But otherwise, no elementary. But full and elementary. So that is the plan for now. Did you have something? No? Summer school? No. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. so what, did you have any? What else do you have? Yeah. You um, update on our projects. Um, phase one of securing lighting. We've got some more lighting going on right now. Uh, Meyer Electric was in today. Um, they'll be putting those lights up there that Craig really wanted right on the home of the car, so we're working on a way to put those up. Um, the uh, <coughs> so we need Duke Schneider to kind of go over the big project this summer. Um, 
they expect and they expect it to be on time all of the HVAC equipment to be here at the end of May. So they'll start staging that stuff. Um, probably most of it will be in the circle drive and the parking lot right next to the accident. So the only parking lot we'll have will be um, over the high school uh, behind the stadium. The, um, the ESSER money, you guys probably got that memo from me, has been approved and signed and we have access to that. We, uh, submitted a budget to that. We're kind of following guidelines that uh, MASA and MSBA has told us to um, make it a little easier to access that money. Um, however, uh, the $1.4 million that will come in, about 600000 of that will be flowing through our coffers and we'll be shifting that back over to take care of the overage that we have, um, which is first is our loan that we have out. Um, that loan, that money will not come to us until the actual the equipment is delivered. So that'll be end of May, and we have to inspect that. And honestly, I think we have to actually hook it up. So it's kind of like just waiting there for us to sign for the check. Um, of the ESSER budget, about three hundred thousand dollars will be designated for learning loss. Um, that's our interventionist. That's some additional aids um, and um, tutoring. So a lot of things going in there possibly some of the software that uh, may fall outside our title budgets. Um, phase two, um, I told you already about summer school. <coughs> that's all I have, that's it. And now we have the best presentation ever from Saber Oglesworth. <laughs> Oh, what? what I've been asked for for I don't know how long. If you've ever been to Sam's Club, it's kind of what they use. In right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and this, this is up the future. Just yeah. so you know, this is up the future. Yeah. <laughs> and this is ADA height. 
Yeah. For the handicap and everything. Automatic, put your hand underneath the water. Yep. And then this is another company I contacted. They're a little bit higher. They're 15,400, of course, ADA compliant. They're prefab. And they're four to ten business days out. For the other one, a little bit cheaper, it's going to take them like three weeks. But with the floor being done, you're looking at two weeks there anyway. They'll be grinding for a week and then epoxying for a week. Uh, new partitions, the, the solid plastic installed by this company is 15,555. Uh, pattern coated steel, similar to Mr. Kohler's got his restrooms over there and in the junior high. We talked about, I talked to the company about stainless steel. They said we don't want that. It looks good for about a day. And then everybody marks it up and then you can't, it's hard to catch up with. And of course, I can, something I can install, it's all plastics, 8,900, and then the pattern coated steel is 6,400. With me installing uh, the plastic, I like that idea a little better. And the MJ guy, he also, everybody, all the schools are going to that because in 10 years, urine's going to rust it. And you're going to have to worry about replacing the panel. That's $400 a panel, $500 a panel. We've seen on that the Kelly's already. On the powder coated steel? Yep. Okay. And I know the concern with the plastic, kids carving in it. Uh, I've seen Cole Camp, I talked to their maintenance director, and he said you can take a heat gun and get rid of 90% of it. Just blowing over it and kind of getting soft again, smooshing it. He said you can tell a little bit in the color difference, but not a whole lot. Then get supplies from Home Depot. This is automatic faucets we're looking at. Uh, looking at some hand dryers. <coughs> Uh, automatic flushers, new toilets, and then putting changing tables in the restrooms as well. Lots of little kiddos coming to ball games and stuff. Me, one of them. I got a two year old, so it's always nice for them to have that. And then, kind of a breakdown of the big ticket items on our pricing the sinks, the epoxy floor. Of course, that one's just ECS. The touchless toilets, that's the total price. The toilets themselves are 980 bucks for 10 of them, so 98 bucks a piece. And your flushers, if you're looking at, they were 339 a piece. And that's a whole new setup, because those ones are probably from the restaurants put in. And then the urinals, they're $1,100 a piece. <coughs> I didn't update that. <coughs> and then the hand dryers, they're eight forty nine dollars a piece. I'm going to put, think about putting four, two in each bathroom. Got to get rid of a lot of our paper towel waste. We hope right. that we're looking for, and those get here just expensive. And then, of course, partition, partition prices. In the grand total, we're looking at $53,047.85 for them installing the partitions and the installation of the floors that's going through Home Depot ordering stuff through them. They're kind of a little cheaper than Lowe's on some things. They kind of bounce back and forth. Uh, so you're looking at 26000 restroom for a fly install. You're looking at $48,367.85 on the partitions because obviously I can't do the flooring. But and then today we found out Nurse Molly has, has, has a grant that all, all of our auto sensing flushers, faucets, and all that stuff follow under her grant. Oh, that's all that time. That knocks off $11,063 if we could get that under her grant. And that's been submitted. We're just waiting for approval. That would be awesome. Stephanie, remember when I ran with a friend of mine up there and she told me about that grant? That's that grant. Really? <laughs> yeah, I went for the one that I was thinking Yeah. Well, I knew it was a lot. Yeah. But I'll be good. Okay. <coughs> 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 
and then, of course, everybody's timeline. Yeah. We'll start if everything, y'all agree with everything, I can start ordering parts tomorrow. And then start the end of school, May 23rd, and the latest-ish, mid-July, bearing materials. Depending on something that comes in late. So like Home Depot, they've got everything at a warehouse. They ship straight to the store or for us. Any questions? That's even using that one company with the epoxy and everything, and then you doing everything. It should all be done by the July. Yep. Uh, up to they will they'll go up to five feet of the wall. What colors do we? Did you talk colors? Uh, they will make us a custom color. They'll do a gray base. Yeah. And then they throw in like a flake, and they can custom make the flake to what we want it to be. Do you want it to be redder or whiter or black, whatever colors you want? Normally it's a tri-color. Or we can do a solid color. Do we have to decide that tonight? Or? No. If we, okay. The ECS guys, the, the, sale, the rep out of the lake, he's rep, he'll come up anytime with a plate or think of a certain color or design or anything. The design said it changed a little bit on the price, but the plate wouldn't change anything. Okay. And he can make us up some samples for us to look at too. Okay. And we'll send up. I like it. Saber's done a lot of good work on this guy's phone though. Nice job. Yes. Yeah. 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 Thank you. I did have one question, Dr. Rob. You know, talking about the air conditioning in those bathrooms, mm -hmm. is that gonna affect how's that gonna affect your project, Saber, with I mean I don't the only thing it'd affect would be the flooring. Because I mean, you got to have the right humidity and right temperature, and if they're, I mean, surely they'll, even if you have the old unit, you can still do that. But right. it sounds like, I, I, seems like <coughs> you're going to have to run some duct work maybe into the female bathroom. I can ask him. You might ask him, there. Dr. Rob, just so it doesn't hold you yeah. up. Right. Yeah. Did Duke tell you that? Well, he would, remember that day he was talking to us on the phone, mm -hmm. and he said something about uh, there was a couple ducks that they had to run in the high school, but not like what they were running their own. Right. I, I thought he said they were going to duck either from the bathroom to that foyer, your new foyer, door foyer, um, something vice versa. <coughs> because I think the men's bathroom is going to be ducked into your office. I believe is right. what he Let's told us. Remind me when we walk with him tomorrow. Let's show him that. See what he says. Okay. Might be good to have him keep that on while that's going on. Yeah. Questions? I do have one question. Yeah, go ahead. Well, I think you did a great job, and I'm just curious, though, like I saw with Home Depot, and you said they were cheaper than Lowe's. Did you consider or call, um, like, Plum Supply or any more wholesale-like places versus typical? Yes, retail? when you get over 15, <coughs> is when their prices start getting cheaper. Okay, okay just curious. Oh, you're good. I've, I've played phone tag with a bunch of companies. I figured you did. <laughs> just I even worked with Hilliard. They come to Dr. Rob was talking to Ron today. I was trying to work him over. <laughs> yeah. And uh, they actually do partitions, bathroom partitions, and he's going to get us a bit on that. Or a price, not a bit. Yeah. Because we already work with them, so. <coughs> I said, come on, give us something better. And that's something I didn't think about them even doing. I know equipment and everything else they do. I didn't think about that. What else? Are you tackling this by yourself, or you and Mike, or what? Uh, most of the demolition I do by myself. Because I just pull and pull the partitions. The biggest parts of the urinals. And when you get in between them two bathrooms, <laughs> yes. that's going to that's gonna be the big part. Yeah. He's been back in there. Yeah. tight. Uh, yeah, that you're getting, there's a whole lot of reworking going on there, too. Right. I figured in like a thousand dollars for miscellaneous materials for unexpected things like that. Get back there and bust a pipe. Where you're gonna run into it? Yeah. Well, they're not too bad. They're cast. Yeah, good thing about the urinals he's putting in. That's gonna be new install attire, so he doesn't have to worry about the floor drain or. But he is. You are talking about putting the floor drain, right? Yeah. Below One the of the urinal drains, I'll bring up to where the new floor is. So you can spray it out or whatever. Yeah. Because there's, yeah, there's not one in there now. We just pushed it off in the room. Yeah. Any other 
Anything else? You guys okay with them proceeding with that project? You want to vote on it? Yeah. Okay. Then if somebody want to move on the up to what was to go back to your number. Up to that probably that top number. For safety's sake, and then we still got if we have the grant then. Yeah. Well, I mean, what number are you going with here? You don't, uh, whatever, if somebody moves on. Well, it's just, I mean, you're not talking about that much money. I'm not saying that Saber couldn't do it. I'm just yeah. thinking of time. You're going to have uh, butts are in there. I mean, the place is going to be a disaster. The whole school is going to look pretty well. <laughs> uh, no. The reason I ask you is we don't want to squeeze our custodian staff and choke them out if they're getting, if Butzer pulls out three days before school starts and the whole place is a wreck still, it still needs cleaned and disinfected and all that stuff. I did talk to. So Shalou. what can you do this summer about releasing? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> uh, I mean, he's got so we can get. It might be all he can do if he's choking. We're talking about elementary and stuff. Wax, rewaxing the junior high in the cafeteria because they said the junior high is basically just a pull and set. HVAC. When I talked to Butzer last time. And help. I'm assuming Butzer's cleaning up after himself. You guys aren't. I talked to him a little bit. Sweet broom clean is all we yeah. yeah, I got that. Just like anybody else. Just yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean Jim, good. Let's go. When Jim was <laughs> yeah. <should> have <laughs> Not bread players. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, generally, I mean, like in your contract, though, it's your responsible for cleanup. Yeah. But we've seen cleanup. Right. But right. well, what we're having Duke come in, Duke Schneider, uh, come in tomorrow, with, and we're going to talk to him about because we're concerned about the time to get it cleaned up. He's going to set up a schedule and start informing Saber every time a section of the building, you're done in this section, you can clean this section, you can wax these all you can let it down in this all anymore. So that we can get segment by segment, as it opens up, we can get to it, um, as opposed to right, and we're out of it until the very last minute. You know, that, that's going to stink. We're going to be able to do it on that. I, I was at a big project they did in Mexico at the high school, four stories worth of building. And they had over 100 workers in there. And the, the teachers came in for four days, and that's all we did is, and principals and everybody, we just cleaned the whole place. That's all we did. And, and cleaned the really custodians. The, the library had a mountain of desks and books in the middle of the library to the ceiling. I couldn't believe it. I never seen anything like that. It's like a bombed out building in Iraq. But I don't think ours will look that bad. Because they have to go through brick walls and put it in for the first time. Just keep in mind, though, when I mean, you run into a little problem here or there, your schedule is delayed. And I promise you, when they tell you we're going to be done with this hallway, mm -hmm. I promise you they're going to be back in that hallway. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Like the money boots. Okay, and that kind of brings up some other things we're going to talk about with modeling and stuff, just to kind of keep our custodians focused on the building so we can have enough time to talk about that here in a little bit. So One quick question. question. The partition's plastic? Yeah, they're an inch thick plastic. What about the leg? They'll be plastic mm -hmm. besides the anchors. Right. Uh, okay. Yeah, that was a question I was, uh, was going to ask is, you know, you pull Saber and his group into doing the work. Uh, does that cost us money somewhere else? Because we're having to hire out to go to, you know, what they could be doing otherwise. I'm trying to figure out if this is a, a strict 5,000 or if it's offset by. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, man. It's going to be, I think, once we get 30, 40 workers in there, we're going to just kind of like improvisation yeah, city trying to keep on top of it. So I don't know. The biggest thing was. Yeah. It's going to be a walk over here. Right. Oh, can't do that. Do over here. Yeah. Yeah. And me and the buster guys, <coughs> they call me, like they've got the ladder up to the 
titled it him on him already. <coughs> and he's been very adamant about communicating with me, and I'm hoping that, that stays that way. Yeah. And the guy that's going to run the buzzer guys, he's been there several times. He was over Christmas break. Uh, he know, he's got my personal cell phone number. He texts me and they're like, hey, I'll be here this day. And communication is going to be the biggest thing with them guys. $53,047.85. So let me let me just make sure I understand. Is our, are, we saying, saying, are, are we saying that we do not want to do the work? The only thing I would be doing is the floor and the partitions. At the 53 or at the 48? At the 53. With the ECS would be coming in. The 48 ECS would be coming in doing the floors anyway. I'd just be installing the partitions. I ran and put all the partitions in, of course. So we, we'll use a higher number of zero to do that. We'll do that. And, uh, yeah, so we'll we make some money back, so we'll find that out. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, did you, Sabre, did you, did you guys vote on that yet? Mm -hmm. Well, Patsy yeah. moved on it. Someone needs to second it. I'll second it. Second by Stephanie, all in favor. Motion carries. One last thing, Sabre. Let's talk about the, uh, we have an RFP out for the gym floor. You want to talk yes. about that a little bit? We will walk in. Uh, Mr. Culpepper, you can chime in whenever, too. Uh, the floor we have now in the high school is seven years old. This, is, this summer will be summer seven. Since summer seven. 2015. From being originally put in, and they recommend after five years to give it to settle, to re and the paint it. And then you're good for 15 years. And we've talked to Lubert's. They've come and looked at it. They're, they're the ones that installed it also. We'd be changing the black outline to a dark stain and a darker stain on the inside of the three-point line. we get our cardinal head in the center. And, and our cardinal head in the center. And two ladders for when they practice. So it's electrical tape. Yeah, the, foot, the footwork ladders that I have taped down with electrical tape. Hey, money man, how Where is this worked into the budget? Not that budget, but I got it already worked into the other budget. The big budget. That's what I'm talking about. The big budget. Or approved budget. Not yet. Okay. You can make that. Okay. This will actually be the next year's budget. Oh, true. Yeah, that's all right. Yeah, all right. Because I'll probably do it. Before. So what's the cost of refinishing yeah. that gym floor and repainting it and all that? The number of bid was 29. Hold on. But we're accepting sealed bids on that. Oh. Yeah. It's out. It's in the paper. It's on the website. But initially, since you were right there. <laughs> I didn't read the paper. It's it's okay. Okay. We're not supposed to talk about the bids yet. Right. I just was curious. I didn't know that was out for bid. Yeah. I'll have Hannah edit that out. Yeah, we please. <laughs> we we got to give them a fair chance at it. So. And then that'd be re waxing. Maybe we'll see what it costs the sand and repaint that one as well. So I don't know the last time the elementary was done. 2003. Okay, so it's original. So the, <laughs> so the RFP that I put out is for both gym floors. So it'd be sanding, waxing, staining, yep. Yep. all the good stuff for both gyms. You can only do that once, right? Oh, elementary, too. Uh, three times. Three well, times. Did you tell us three when they put the four down? They could sand and paint three times. They said if you want. Yeah, that's uh, recommended. Yeah. Is this elementary? Our, too? No, no, no. Well, we're talking about the new gym in high school. Yeah, right. Um, 
like you, you would get 30 more years out of your Oh, family. absolutely. 15 years, do it again, which reality is 15 equals 17 or 18. Ours has just a little bit of board replacement, right? It needs to be done, not much, very minor, some fixes. Okay, well, let's get the sealed beds and open them. Yep, that would be next board meeting. Just yeah. give you guys a heads up. You want to walk around? You can't there. stop a vendor from telling you what the price is, though. <laughs> so, all right. Moving on. I guess we do. Did you guys vote? Say do it. We did. Uh, yes. Wait, we got a motion and a, who's the second? Mm -hmm. And all in favor? We, we got a second. Yes. Go get them. Go okay. get them, <laughs> All right. We're moving on. Building admin reports. Uh, okay. What question does anyone have for our admin? <laughs> Not getting you guys off the hook, but we got a lot to do here. I have a question. Yes, actually, good. Yep. Yep. Um, I mean, how are you? How are you going to work around the gym situation this summer? Uh, well, I, 2015, whenever we had that bond issue passed, I was able to work with people at St. Andrews to get us some days. Okay, that was what I was going to ask. Is those guys? It's kind of different for each sport. Luckily, we only have. You know, that need the gym, you only need basketball and volleyball that, you know, use the gym a lot. Um, for me, if I can have two practices, um, I'll be okay. Most of our stuff is shoot out to other places. Um, but yeah, that's the timeline wise, that's why we told them uh, the gym four people, <coughs> we told them they had to be out by 20th, I think, of July. So it gave yeah. them a full two, two and a half plus weeks. So it'd be ready to go for the first day of volleyball practice um, on August 8th. Yeah. Gym four, if they were to do it. Um, but far as practices in the summer, once school year ends, we'll be working with St. Andrews to get, you know, a realistic amount of days, options that we can go. We're not going to be able to hold full week team games like we normally do, but we did not do that with the either. I mean, you can't take up St. Andrews Gym for the entire month of June. Um, I don't think they're going to let us do that anyway. Um, we'll see. But I would think realistically, you know, if you can get four or five practices in there with each team, you only get 20 contact days. So if you spend five or 20 days in the gym, I think you're not right. Sports still pretty accurate that were in the report, or have they? Uh, 14. Uh, so baseball's 14, but one kid can't play this year, so mm -hmm. I put it at 13. Um, softball, um, 12 kids. Track, 14 kids. Uh, golf is still nine kids with one kid that is showing up occasionally, but they might have 10 if that kid shows up, but I don't think so. I think it's nine. Um, and then junior high track is pretty large. You got big eighth grade. Lost one today. I think they lost one today for golf. <coughs> and there's one that's possibly thinking about it. That's what I was informed with after practice. And some of the numbers of high school kids that you know it's skewed. If you look at the eighth grade, eighth grade classes. Got a lot of kids that participate, so the junior high is a huge number. Our senior class had three football players, one girl, one boy basketball player, um, no baseball players. Your senior class didn't have a lot of kids that participate. Um, and the junior class baseball has one. Um, so, you know, your upperclassmen aren't huge participators in sports right now. Then we not have, well, yeah, we don't really have a JV baseball team either. Well, with the kid that broke his thumb, <laughs> I, took out, I took out one through two JV pitchers. So right now, for the first two weeks, it's not looking like you're going to, depending on weather, stuff like that, you know, with limited number of innings you get for an entire season. 
The kid was Why broke his bones bad until we get him mad together. <laughs> but I think once we get old, I think we get three innings JV baseball. You know, yeah. half the games are just about all our conference heads anyways. About half the teams have three innings. Yep. All right. What else, guys? Gals? I don't have anything. New business. We had had some fun facts if you all pay attention to them or not. I read them. Well, I was trying to carry on Kelly's tradition of fun facts. Yeah, She's trying to trump <laughs> No, I'm trying to just I'm it over. passing it off. <laughs> passing it along. I bet she doesn't know how many days to my birthday either, though. And I could have done either because I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you got a calendar. <laughs> no, I don't. Marking off. Yeah, okay. I just had, can I share something? Yes. I have my title and it's been here, but we had an excellent Mr. Stinky Feet night. Yeah. I did see it. Informational night, night, and those gals put that together. It's the most fun we've had in a long time, yeah. so we appreciate that. Hopefully they'll carry that on. Very, um, cool. very entertaining. Um, I've seen him do the adult version. It's clean adult, but like at the principal's thing at the lake uh, a few years back, and he made it, all the principals and people get up and do the things he made kids do. So that was a very good informational night, good feedback. And we are going to do a kindergarten information night, not necessarily a screening, uh, just because of the building project. Um, we do a meet and greet in the fall, but when they can't tell us if we can be in August 1st or August 15th, uh, we uh, had Crystal go ahead and put up put a night together, and so they're going to do just an informational night. <coughs> Parents with kiddos coming to kindergarten just to come in and still kind of do a meet and greet, no testing. Um, our testings are going to be different next year uh, due to DESE regulations. So that's just two things I wanted to touch on. Because I got it on my board report, but I didn't know if you. Not not necessarily. But anyway, thank you, girls and men. All right, moving on. New business. Grass mowing. You guys have a preference on do you want to put that out for good again or do you want to just tell you accrued Do we have That's to do it annually? I think the guys that did it last year did a good job, didn't they? Oh. Yeah. 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 That was the only downfall. Yeah. If it rained, the, the grass suffered everywhere. Oh, well, I would mow it. But yeah. Well <laughs> yeah, that's true. Well, what I mean, this is a discussion. Do we want to have the Sabres team mow it or bit it out? I think it depends on capacity. I mean, I would say bit it, but that's I'm looking at the big picture. This summer, what is our regulation on age getting on the mower? Because I am going to have a couple high school kids. Miss Fisher's son, Raven, he's really interested in doing it. He'll be 16 in May, and he mows a lot of yards. Yeah, I mean, well, if we're bending it out, it's going to be a company. Right, no, yeah. I mean, if we decided to do it in a house, yeah, we just hire a couple of high schoolers. Why not? Yeah, y'all did a few years ago. We have kids doing a lot more dangerous stuff than on grass. Right. Yeah, they're running saws and welding. Yeah. I mean, my kids are doing shooting mowers and running mowers, yeah. I don't care if we want to do it that way, too. I mean, if Culpepper were, if you were mowing the football field anyway. Right. Yeah, and Sabre's going to take over. I mean, over. now what are you going to do all summer? Sabre's taking over the football field. So. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. If we want to handle it, we'll handle it. I mean, do you think if you're going to bring in two high school kids or whatever to help you, will you be, will they be able to keep up with that and whatever else you need for them to do? Right. Like, I got Mikey. Uh, Love Mikey to death. He loves to mow. Well, he's done that for forever. Right. And if I've got Mikey and <coughs> say Braden Fisher out there, I think we can handle it. 
then I'll still have me when I'm not working on the restrooms, uh, Tina, Cody, <coughs> whenever we get a second, ninth person hired, get back to full staff to keep up with the building and whatnot. I'd almost rather do that, and then if we get a pickle, then you can call Ed and Aaron and say, hey, can you help us out a few weeks? You know. Well, whenever school starts up, though, will it, I mean, the yard, the grass will start to be mowed through, like, October. Probably. We won't have projects going on then. We'll go back to normal. And me and Mikey can handle it there. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> we, what do you want to do, Cyber? You're the director. I mean, I'm I'm comfortable thinking we can mow. I, I understand Craig's. <coughs> I've been in a lot of projects, and nothing goes the way you want it to. For Christ's sakes, I couldn't even do phase one in the time. Oh, I know. You think we're going to tackle this? So Buzz is pretty confident. The guys I've talked to, they. I mean, you're going to have to hold your hands to the fire. Yeah. yeah. And that's why I said let's cut back some school. Let's give I mean, that's why I'm thinking it's be best to fit it. He's already tackling the bathroom. He's in the bathroom in between there. Mike's mowing. Braden Fisher's mowing. Somebody throws a rock through somebody's windshield going down 50 highway. Well, now he's got to climb out of what he's doing. I don't know. Just, we're going to have a lot going on. Right. But I'm one of seven, so it doesn't. Well, you can move on it. Is this something that, say, we do let Saber in the group do it, and we come to the, or he comes to the conclusion that it's way too much because yeah. everything's coming wrong? Can we come back together, or him come and say, "I need help. I can't do it." We can bid at any time. Yeah, I mean, if he, if he thinks he can do it, I can lean towards letting him do it, and then just you know, feel comfortable, hopefully feel comfortable, and come to us if. Right. You yeah. can't, you know, start this stuff starts looking like it's just right. like going to be feasible. Yeah. And we can, make, we can make a decision at that point. That's why we hired you to do the thinking. <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. I'll come back and help you. <laughs> I don't think Jason said he wanted to do it. <laughs> anyway, so. I got a nurse that mowed a lot of it last year anyway. <coughs> Something to do it. Somebody want to move the lay on the table on that? Until, yeah. uh, until he did a bowling season, you may not get him. I just want the football field. It doesn't might be sky high, too. We got yes, the equipment. Yes, it is. Yeah. I can get a thing. I don't know what I do. <laughs> it's been a long time, but I do it. Especially well, on one, right one of those. I know two guys in this room there in the sun enough. <laughs> I didn't say you. Say. I won't be. Oh. Yeah. I know. Revision of policy GCPB, resignation yeah. professional staff. That's just an update. I talked to MSBA. Um, we do need to pass it or not pass it or go with this we have right now. Um, going into contract season. Um, there's some other things to say that we've had. Um, I know the center had several people highly qualified went through the interview process, had them locked in, and all of a sudden, they went to Boonville or they went yeah. somewhere else. They continued. They held our job as a backup and then bought us to get out of contracts, which is not good for our kids, it's not good for our service. They made a commitment, they signed a contract. One of them, I remember, um, actually, our policy had a little loophole in there where they didn't pay any kind of liquidated damages at all, and then she scrambled in the middle of June trying to find somebody spot. That's not good. That is also how we end up with um, um, candidates that maybe have not done so well with other districts. So we don't get the highest quality candidates. Uh, we have to spend a lot more time with the backgrounds. It's, it's time, 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 time. Even though Nancy had to come in um, some extra weeks and just trying to fill spots. I think if people sign the contract, they should be living up to their commitments. So you see some changes there. <clears throat> on 
on the liquidated damages part, um, and um, also just short up that language over to the <coughs> What do you do when they don't pay? When they don't pay, um, you actually go um, and you turn them into the Missouri School Board, um, and they are now um, sanctioning those people who break contracts for up to a year. They lose their license to teach. Yeah. So they are starting to do that. Well, I want to say thank you for this. This is wonderful. Gives yeah. us a little bit of background. Yep. And we can play tough. Yeah. I mean, we need we need good teachers for our kids, and everybody's going after them. I think one thing that works for us and against us is we are very quick to get jobs posted. We're very we adopted talent ed a long time ago, so it put us in the stream of people being able to apply quickly and be interviewed. Miss um, Metter, Mr. Kohler, Jason, uh, Nancy have been really great in using that program to our advantage. So we're getting our hiring decisions made fairly quick. And we're seeing the top end of the people who are coming out that are looking at us and say, well, this is a nice small school. Uh, I think I'd want to come here. And then we're talking to them about a contract, talking to them about pay, before bigger school districts have even moved. On these people, they're, they're very ponderous and slow. Haven't been in the largest in the state. I can say that. It takes a while to work through all the little layers of bureaucracy. And they're hiring <coughs> late May, July. We don't want to be in that zone, but we also don't want to have people under contract and then continuing to look for a job when they committed to us. So there's some pretty stiff things that they'll have to consider if they want to try to do that. Is this something that we they sign? Mm-hmm. It's just a contract. Yeah. We, in the world, yes. we get a very narrow window to pick up the best candidates for our school district. That's what makes it difficult. It's a small rule line. You know, you start getting outside of it, you're, you're not in the zone as much anymore. Alright. I'll move to approve the revision of policy GCP. Motion by Bob. Second. Second by Aaron. All in favor? Motion carries. Okay. All right, moving on. To I make a motion to move into closed session for compliance with 610.21 to discuss bullet points 1, 3, 13. To include the Board of Education, Mr. Kohler, Terry, and the administrators. Mr. Kohler, Leanna, Kohler. Yeah. All second. Second by Bo. Craig. Yes. Patsy. Yes. Ashley. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Bo. Yes. Stephanie. Yes. And yes for me. Thank you guys. Uh, you saw all the end come in. Your food is over there. Enjoy. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much. Thank you guys. We'll take a short recess and get back into this. Make sure you look at your name on it.